The punk era was born in the 1970s in the UK, US, and Australia. This kind of music was labeled as anti-establishment and non-conformist that went against society's norms through both its lyrics and music. In the words of Malcolm McLaren, the manager of the Sex Pistols, the emotions and feelings that are normally tied to punk music are dirty, shocking, spectacular, and cruel. The lyrics in punk music, along with other genres like rap and heavy metal, can actually cause the listener to start believing the world is a meaner place than it actually is. Thus, this can lead listeners to have increased aggressiveness, destructiveness, and violence. With many punk lyrics revolving around social and political issues, this would make perfect sense. Hi, I'm Hayden Meenard and I'm a senior at MICDS and I love listening to music. I listen to it every day. When I wake up, when I shower, when I'm in the car, when I'm with friends, when I'm on my way to practice or games, when I go to social events, I basically surround myself with music and I would feel lost without it. That is why I'm here to discover the effect that music has on the mind to influence certain decisions and emotions and seeing the results. In order to discover more about music and its effect on the mind, I decided to go to Vintage Vinyl in the Delmar Loop to find out more specifically about the punk genre and interviewed one of the employees. A lot of people I think are just turned off when they hear the word punk because they think it's like all screaming and just fast tempos and stuff like that, but there's a lot more to it than that and I think if people learned more about the uh, more of the history of punk and also what goes into punk other than the music itself, I think you would get a lot more interest in it. Instead of just focusing on punk music, I wanted to explore other genres as well. The first part of my experiment started with what I do after school. My experiment here was to play upbeat music in the locker room and during warm-ups to see how it affected each player's mood before playing. According to Dutch neuroscientist Dr. Jacob Jalij, music activates the motor areas of the brain causing us to want to move to the rhythm of the song. Thus, this leads to why fast tempo songs are linked with more movement, energy, and dancing. In fact, in a 2012 research review, one of the world's leading experts in the psychology of exercise, Kostas Karagiorgis of Brunel University in London, stated that music is basically, quote, a type of legal performance enhancing drug. Although I trust these sources, I wanted to see if this was actually true for one of my everyday activities. Yeah, I was just feeling really tired and in a bad mood after school, and it just brought my mood up and made me feel more energized. I feel like the team overall was more energized, and especially after school, like everyone was probably tired. The team was just more motivated and played better during practice. Punk music just has an intense energy about it that is unlike anything else in other types of music. It's a, it's punk is more than just the music. It's um, it's like a way of life. It's a whole mentality about like doing whatever the hell you want. According to experienced punk music blogger Nathan Hanner. The relationship between punk music and society is compiled of many factions differing from extremist liberal standpoints, believing in a do-it-yourself ideology, and following the straight-edge movement. All of these groups stand against a societal norm, whether it be a behavior or belief. The movements basically did whatever they wanted despite the consequences of how society would perceive them. There is a myth that listening to Mozart can make you smarter, focus better, and be more creative. This is somewhat false, for all genres of music can potentially bring out your inner creativity. Award-winning author Nona May King claims her music library consists of music across many genres, and she selects each genre in order to write about certain emotions. The example she used was from her latest novel, Searching for Sarah, as it was set in the mid-1890s, and she listened to the more modern symphonic undertones to bring out the feelings of dark intensity and grief. My experiment with these writers was to give them four different songs, write to each of them, and see which piece was their most creative. It made me feel really isolated, so I feel I felt like I could concentrate on what I was doing more, and it kind of like concentrated my focus on my task. Like I kind of went from normal to more calm, tranquil. And I wrote that I was sitting by a lake, and I just finished setting up camp, but I was falling asleep. Um, outside like this isolated clearing where I was just staring up at the sky. My most creative piece was Snap Your Fingers by Extremely Dope Music. 
I couldn't concentrate at all and just kind of let the music take over and ended up writing about how I was a spy on a secret mission in a nightclub. I think it definitely did. I don't usually write or listen to music when I write just because it's distracting, but um, it definitely, I think I wrote about some things that I never would have. Um, yes, I don't write with music usually, so I'll have to try it now, <laughs> definitely. I wouldn't go to like, really pay a lot of money to go see a punk show nowadays, but I'll, there's definitely a lot of punk bands in town that are really awesome. Maximum Effort is the name of one. Skin Tags, uh, Little Big Bangs, they actually just played in front of our store yesterday for Record Store Day. It was really great. The energy that they put in the performance too, I mean, it's it, it wouldn't really be punk if they were just standing up there just like strumming, you know. They gotta put their whole body and soul into it. Music plays an inspirational role within the arts. It is used by many artists ranging from painters, drawers, fashion designers, songwriters, actors, etc. in order for them to dive into their creative thinking and produce something spectacular. During New York Fashion Week, New York Times reporter Leslie Davis explored the workplaces and playlists of various fashion designers and focused on how they use music to inspire their creations. Fashion designer Rachel Comey stated, quote, The collective soundtrack is ever-present in our studio. Like the fabric swatches on our mood boards, it's just another ingredient to our season's influences. In relation to art, I wanted to do my own exploring, but in a different field. I focused on artist Emmy Butler and gave her a selection of four different songs in which she had to draw whatever came to mind when she listened to each of them. From this, I wanted her to tell me why she drew what she did and how the music inspired her to draw it. I drew this just because faces are just kind of my go-to, especially when I'm like nervous or something. It's something that I know how to do, like okay, and it's something that I can just put a bunch of random forms down and it'll form something that looks like a face. But I think how I did it was more how the music made me feel, like the rhythm kind of had more of an influence in that, and it kind of just dictates like how I actually draw. Like the lines, that's basically how I felt it. Like that is like the rhythm of the music was how I put the lines down. Kind of scribbly and not really geometric, but there was still some straight lines in there. 